Hello guys and welcome back to Sonic Origins. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished up the first half of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the Sonic 3 portion. Now we're into the and Knuckles portion. Uh, first we're starting off in Mushroom Hill Zone. Hi Knuckles. So Mushroom Hill Zone actually made an appearance in the 3DS version of Sonic Generations, which had different levels from the original main version of Sonic Generations. So we go where Knuckles just came out of, and we see the Master Emerald Altar. It's at this point that we lose the Chaos Emeralds, meaning that we can't actually uh, transform into supersonic at the moment, but if you go ahead and jump on one of the chaos emeralds We get transported to a new special stage. That's right in Sonic 3 and Knuckles You have to actually technically collect 14 whole emeralds Which is a huge step up from the last game. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of those really quickly uh, You actually don't even have to you can actually get all of the Chaos Emeralds in the first zone of Sonic & Knuckles, just like uh, in Sonic 2. Because unlike Sonic 3, where there were two, um, there were two giant rings per act and two acts per zone, in Sonic & Knuckles, there are four giant rings per act and, again, two acts per zone. The thing is about this though, I can usually like 99% of the time I can remember all of the all of the giant ring locations in Sonic 3. I can never remember where the Sonic and Knuckles giant rings are. So if you see if you notice any cuts in the video that are just in weird unnatural places, it's probably just because I had to quickly look up a guide for where to find the giant rings. I do want to get all of the emeralds uh, at the very beginning of this, though, because the Sonic and Knuckles portion of Sonic 3 and Knuckles is quite tough. One thing that I re never really noticed about myself when I'm recording stuff is that my intro hypes me up a lot more than I th than I think it does in terms of energy. Uh, you'll notice whenever I do ADR. Um, when I have to like edit in audio of me like explaining something because I couldn't explain it uh, in the middle of the video uh, I'll get back to this that topic in just a second. We get the emerald but this Is a super emerald not a chaos emerald So the chaos emeralds allow you to transform into supersonic then what did the super emeralds do? Let's go ahead and find out I also think it's kind of cool how you get these cutscenes in the middle of the Sonic Got the Emerald screens. But yeah, as I was mentioning before, ADR, like when I record it for videos, you could always like clearly tell that the audio is a bit different than how it is, you know, between the normal video and how it is when I add audio in in post. And I think that's because, one of the reasons for that at least, is because Whenever I do my intro, it, like, psychs me up so much more than you'd think it would. Because when I do the intro, I always say it, like, pretty much the exact same way. I say it like, hello guys and welcome back to Sonic Origins and stuff like that. And I guess that just makes my brain go, oh, we're gonna be talking like this with a lot more energy. And my brain just does that. And sometimes I, like, regress into, like, a very quiet and talkative person. But usually I try to keep up that energy throughout most of the video. When I do additional dialogue recording though, um, I don't even know if that's the correct term for it, but whenever I do that, it always sounds like, okay, so this is, this is these, this is this thing that I'm trying to explain. And something like that, right? There's giant ring number two. Unless I'm mistaken, I remember this one being really, really hard. Yeah, this is the one. So I've officially, at this point in the series, crap. At this point in the series, I have officially run out of any new trivia to say about this game. 
I've pretty much said everything I wanted to say about Sonic 1, Sonic CD, Sonic 2, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Uh, if I think of anything uh, in the future, I'll of course say it, because there will sometimes be things that I want to quickly add in, uh, because I don't think of everything right away. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is things are going to be a bit more uh, heavily edited, and I'm going to go off topic a lot more. So I'm just gonna, I don't know, start talking about games I've been playing and stuff like that. I recently finished uh, Danganronpa S, and that was the last Danganronpa like entry that I hadn't finished yet, because over the past year, um, not like past year, but over the last several months, I've been, uh, I decided to go through the entire series again and experience everything, not just the games, but also, you know, the anime, the light novels, the manga, the weird third-person shooter spin-off. And it's actually been really, really fun. I've actually been enjoying things a lot more than I thought I would. I think all that additional stuff really, like, fleshes out the world, even if it's not, like, 100% necessary. I still think it's a lot of fun. But yeah, now that I finished Danganronpa S, I'm just going back through my games and finishing games that I haven't finished yet for whatever reason. Uh, the one that I'm currently working on beating right now is Yakuza Kiwami 2. Because I loved Zero and Kiwami 1, and I loved Kiwami 2 from what I've played so far. I just finished Chapter 11. Uh, but I never ended up finishing it just because I kept getting distracted by various different things. But yeah, now I'm playing through it again, and it has been tons of fun. Expect a Yakuza 0 playthrough at some point this year. Uh, hopefully if I can fit it into my schedule. It's a very long game, but I'll still try to uh, start the LP by the end of this year. And then Persona 5, I technically never finished. Although I have seen the end of the game through Let's Plays and stuff like that, and I got to, like, I think I'm in the middle of November in my playthrough. Uh, I just technically never finished it, and so I'm gonna go ahead and rectify that real quick. Originally, I was, like, playing through the game with, like, a walkthrough for, um, for social links and stuff like that. But I realized, at least for me, psychologically, the act of exiting out of the game, or not exiting out of it, but, like, tabbing out of the game, going to, like, look up a walkthrough, um... You know, and looking through the guide to make sure I get everything right. Even though I enjoy, like, making sure that I get all of the correct dialogue options. It's just not as fun to play through. So I'm gonna actually, you know, use my brain when playing through the game. Who would have thought playing through the game using your own mind is a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually gonna go back and play through all of the Persona spin-offs as well. Because... I haven't finished any of them. I got, like, most of the way through Persona 4 Arena and then stopped because I kind of got bored in the middle of it. But yeah, I'm going to play through the Arena games, the Q games, uh, Strikers, Tactica. I'll even see if I can get the dancing games somehow. Even though that's, like, the one series that Atlas refuses to re-release. And then, of course, once I finish all of the spin-offs, I'll finally get around to finishing Persona 1 and Persona 2. I don't know... Let me know if I'm just an idiot or something. I think Persona 1 is what made me realize that I'm really bad at old video games. Because... Going back and playing through it... Wh what happens to me for that... With me for that game is that... I get to... I play through the game, and then I get to this specific point where all of the enemies immediately one-shot me and I just keep dying over and over, and I realize that I'm not emotionally connected enough with the story or having fun with the gameplay to the point where I want to continue playing even through, you know, all of these tough enemies. And so I stop playing, and I go online to, you know, at, to see what other people think about, uh, you know, Persona 1 and the difficulty. And every single person I've seen says it's way too easy. And so at this point, I'm just like, am I stupid? <laughs> like... Persona 2 Innocent Sin is another one that people say is really easy, at least the PSP version. 
And I have no problem with that at all. I one-shot pretty much everything in that game. But I don't know why I struggle with Persona 1 so much. Maybe it's just that I don't under fully understand the mechanics or anything like or something like that. One thing that I will say though, and I might have mentioned this before uh, in a different LP, but people need to realize that it's okay to not for for a series that's like not ongoing and disconnected, it's okay to not play a game in the franchise. Like, because Personas 3, 4, and 5 are pretty much completely disconnected. There are, of course, references to the previous games, um, which I really, really like. And the spin-offs, like, fully connect the games through crossovers. But, like, you can play Persona 3 without having played Persona 1 and 2. You can play Persona 4 without playing th uh, 1 through 3. And you can play Persona 5 without having played 1 through 4. And I assume Persona 6 is going to be the same way. And... I don't know, people are so like, and this gets back onto what I was saying earlier about people being like, oh, you need to complete the series and, or you're not a real fan. And so I've seen a lot of discourse of being like, oh, you haven't played Persona 1 and 2, you're not a real fan. Or vice versa, people saying that like, you know, Persona 1 and 2 aren't real Persona games because they don't have that same style. I think both sides of I think both of those sides are really rude, um, at least from what I've seen. As someone who has only really pl uh, messed around with the modern games, uh, only re really beaten the modern games, like, if someone was like, oh, I'm a huge Persona fan, uh, and I was like, oh, which games have you played? And they were like, oh, Persona 1 and 2. I'd be like, oh, cool. And that would be the end of that. Because, like, it's so weird how people get so quickly upset over the idea of someone not playing all of the games that they've played in a non-linear series. I know that the games have numbers after them, but you don't need to play Persona 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. Like, from what I've seen, Persona 1 and 2 are a bit more connected than the rest of the series. But even then, I know, I'm sure that some people have jumped in with Persona 2 Innocent Sin and been completely fine. The only uh, exception to this rule being Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, which is just Persona 2 Part 2, which picks up, which from what I've seen, picks up directly after the end of the, uh, after the end of Persona 2 Innocent Sin. And of course the spin-offs, uh, because like I said, those cross over the games and have direct spoilers. But anyways, the point that I was trying to get to here is just be nicer to people. Come on, stop trying to like, make everything that you ever do, you know, the correct way to do things. And please note that I'm only talking to a specific subset of people. I'm not talking about, like, everyone who just, like, for Persona 1 and 2 fans who are just like, I just really want people to experience these games that I love. You're completely fine. That is, do not let me stop you from being like, oh, hey, I really highly suggest you check out this game that I like. What I'm trying to, you know condemn here is people who try to make others feel bad for not playing a specific game in the, in the series. Doing something a bit similar to the opening of Sonic 3, um, we're kind of subverting the typical first level is a grass level. Um, this one is less so because it's just like grass level but it's the f but it's orange now instead of green that was super cool but I still like this I still think it provides like a lot of contrast to what we are typically used to seeing at the beginning of Sonic games so recently the official Ace Attorney website has a timeline on it now like a chronological timeline of all of the different uh, of all of the different games and if you know me you know I love timelines and putting games in like chronological order and stuff like that so instantly I was like I love Ace Attorney I love timelines this is the coolest thing ever a very interesting thing they did is they didn't give us concrete dates for when uh, the games take place because if you for the Ace Attorney series if you ever try to look at when the games take place 
like what year the games take place and keep track of that, some of the dialogue starts to not make sense. So they just do this thing where it's like, the second game is a year after the first game, the third game is a year after the second game, so on and so forth, which matches up a lot more with the dialogue. But yeah, I love whenever, you know, franchises release official timelines for their series. It's just so cool to me. I don't know why, it's just one of those weird, nerdy things that I'm into, I guess. With the Legend of Zelda series, uh, people often uh, say that, you know, the timeline doesn't make sense and it was just something that was like hobbled together at the last minute, um, just for the sake of it. But I remember seeing this video uh, recently, which goes into detail on why, like, each game is placed where it is and how, like, if you follow the game's, each game's promotional material and stuff like that, you know, it makes sense as to why one game goes into the other goes into the other. If I can find it, I'll be sure to link it in the description. Speaking of timelines and stuff like that, uh, there is, you know, an official Sonic timeline somewhere. It's not been released to the public yet. I assume they're still working on it. Um, if it ever does get released, I don't even know if it's, like, supposedly supposed to be released. Um, or if it's ju just something for people to keep track of. Uh, if it ever does get released, that'll be so freaking cool. And then I'll also have to probably update my, uh, my S Canon Sonic slideshow. I'll update that at some point and try to make it a bit more presentable. Because as it just stands now, it's just like... I mean, it's not ugly per se, but it's kind of just empty feeling. So one interesting thing about uh, the original version of Sonic and Knuckles is in that version of the game, Tails isn't there. I don't know why this is um, from either a pers from a per story perspective. If I had to make like an out of universe, uh, like a doyleist reason for why that is, um, it's probably because you know, the game is called Sonic and Knuckles, so prominently featuring a character that isn't either Sonic or Knuckles wasn't their goal, I'm guessing. Anyways, since Sonic Origins is like the canon version of the classic of the original four like classic games, um, you know, Tails is with us uh, during the events of the and Knuckles half of the game, so. Just one weird little oddity that I thought I'd point out. Anyways, I think we're in the last special stage here. We've been going on for quite a while doing all the special stages, so I think, I fun funnily enough, I might end off the video after only doing one zone. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's the last Super Emerald. So it's time to see our reward for collecting all of the different Super Emeralds. Now Sonic can be Hypersonic. Hypersonic is something that's exclusive to Sonic 3 and Knuckles alone. So, works just like Super Sonic. Uh, you collect 50 rings and, you know, you get to transform. Uh, but he's a little different visually. We'll see in just a second. Come on, I just need one more ring. I think these things in concept are very funny. I think slowly going upwards 
with this like weird squeaking sound in the background is very funny. Um, anyways, hypersonic. But now instead of being yellow, he's a variety of different colors and he sparkles. He's very cool. Also, he has this sort of homing attack, I guess. Not homing attack, but like an attack that makes him boost forward. I hope this doesn't cause any epilepsy problems. Just in case, for the sake of it, I will put an epilepsy warning before this video. Um, or at least at the very start of the video. And of course, right before we get to Hypersonic doing his stuff, then I'll also put an extra additional warning. Welcome to Flying Battery Zone. This zone, this zone, is something we're gonna have to put off until next time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and then the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and jump right back into Flying Battery, and maybe finish the game? I'm not entirely sure. We've only done one zone so far, so we might need an additional extra episode for the finale. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.